Let's talk about some bad candy, or as I like to call it, candy corn. <laughs> Bad candy. Bad candy. Bad. That is making its way to DVD and streaming services today, all the way from Kaleidoscope Entertainment. And the reason why we are talking about bad candy today, as opposed to The Wicker Man, is because this was a screener that I received from a great horror review collaborative website called GingerNutsOfHorror.com. Many of you have heard me talk about it for a little over a year and a half now, and it's October, it's the holiday month, so we gotta talk about some horror screeners that I'm getting, and a movie movie that just has a whole bunch of Halloween decorations all over the place. Is there a good story there? No, not really. But it is really fun to get this screener, so thank you very much, Jim McLeod, for the screener and the collaboration. I do recommend everyone go over to gingernutsofhorror.com, great place where you can find book reviews, film reviews, video game reviews, anything that has anything to do with horror, it's on there. It's a great website. And I promise you, the next review that I'm going to do will be The Wicker Man. This is the second time I've pushed it back for good reason. I promise it's not like I'm avoiding the thing. Or am I? All oh, the bees! Oh! As the autumn sun fades, the dark clouds of pitch black Halloween night begin to settle over the small American town of New Salem. The annual Fright Fresh show is underway on the local radio station, on which two full on shock jocks begin to retell local legends of terror from yesteryear, bringing them to life before your bloodshot eyes. But will a few good souls survive to see a another dawn? Oh, will they? I mean, I, I don't know. Probably if this film has any recognition at all, it's because it's starring Slipknot's Corey Taylor and Gremlin star Zach Galligan. They're the two radio disc jockeys. They're the one who are telling all of these tales. So yeah, that that's where all the budget went for this film. That and all the Halloween decorations and the masks that you see. Which I will say, this is the first horror film that I reviewed this year, here in the month of October, that has made me feel like it's Halloween. Halloween is coming up. This thing is all decked out in Halloween decorations, costumes, candy, the fake spider webs. Basically a lot more elaborate than what I have behind me. So in terms of that aspect, I really like this film. Every everything else I don't. I do always have to preface this. I'm not the biggest horror fan. I'm not the biggest horror guy. This is definitely one of those things that I would never have touched. And after watching it, I'd be like, yeah, I really don't want to touch it again. It's a horror anthology film, which I actually really like horror anthology films. It's just short little stories. And then you can pick out of each one, oh, which one is your favorite, which one is your least favorite, to see any cool, like, tie-ins between the stories, if there is any. Here, though, the whole cumulative thing just seemed kind of pointless and stupid and... To be honest, I was kind of lost through the whole thing. Just trying to figure out, gosh, what is the purpose? Other than showcasing, gosh, there are some pretty sick people in this world. Let's start off with the good things, though. I do like the masks and the prosthetics that are used in this movie. The clown, the evil vampire, the gigantic bat, or I guess if this was like the DC universe, it, that would literally be Man Bat. All of those look creepy as hell. And probably my favorite story out of all of these stories is when the evil clown kind of fights for justice from this guy who's putting razor blades and poisoning all of the candy that he's passing out on Halloween, which, like, good! Good for you, evil clown. I don't like clowns a lot because they freak me out, but you're a good evil clown. You're saving the children when you're not taking them back and turning them into little tiny figurines, which that was the very first story in here where this evil clown seduces this little kid back to his little lair and adds him to his figurine collection. And I went, oh my God, you plagiarize Ernest scared stupid. Don't you dare plagiarize Ernest. I guess the only thing different about this is that it was a clown and not a troll. But that was the very first story that we get and it set the tone for everything. Then we have a story of a kid who wants to go out on Halloween Halloween, but has a drunken father who abuses her, and she has the powers to draw, I guess, creatures that come to life, and they wreak havoc on the household. Which I guess the story was fine, but there were a lot of pacing issues in it, where it just seemed like there was a lot of downtime. And really, that's the big overall note I can give to this entire anthology, is that pacing 
is an issue here. That and sound design, I feel like it's very uninspired, whether it's the score or just plain sound effects for the atmosphere, just the white noise that we should be hearing just as we hear in our normal everyday lives. I wasn't really hearing any of that, so watching it, it really felt like the pacing was slowing down because I wasn't fully engaged, my ears were not fully engaged the entire time. Maybe there is something there, maybe my TV just didn't amplify it, but I mean, it's, it's a brand new TV, so I would assume it, it would have. And then we also have a storyline of this guy dressed up as a vampire who's an Uber driver and drives around all night and picks up prostitutes, but is secretly kidnapping a whole bunch of men to take out into the woods to feed to the man bat. Which at that point, it turned into like a martial arts crime fighting movie, and it just seemed <laughs> out of place. There is an actor who does show up in this little story. His name is Derek Russo, who just oozes charisma for days. He was a joy to watch. I don't know if his lines were scripted. If they were, he made them sound natural. Sounded like he was improvising them. I loved him. He was great. He is by far the best part of this movie. But just adding on top of this story, we have a whole bunch of other stories that are just... I don't know, they, they lack substance for me. There's this guy who puts roofies into people's drinks and tries to essentially rape them and then gets raped himself. And I guess, okay, cool. He's also just standing at a party and walks up to two women and says, hey, I have these pills, you wanna take them? And they're like, yeah, sure, whatever. That's the mindset and the mentality of the characters in this movie. I really don't want to make it seem like I'm bashing indie horror because I really don't want to. I think there are a lot of great indie horror films out there and a lot of indie horror filmmakers out there. It's just this one, the whole anthology, putting everything together and just the technical aspects, I was not impressed with this film and I will probably never go back to watch it again. I'm gonna give Bad Candy two out of five Blu-rays. All right, everyone, we have put it off for two reviews straight. Next time, I promise, we will be watching The Wicker Man. I promise. If any of you have recommendations of films that you want me to review on here, you can make a PayPal donation on the main page of my YouTube channel. Any size donation will do, just attach your movie recommendation with your donation, and if I have access to it, I will watch it, review it, give you a shout out on the channel, and get my review of it published as quickly as I possibly can. So guys, have you seen the indie film Bad Candy? What did you think about it? Or if you've never seen it before and you stumbled across because of this video, then comment below, let me know what you thought about it. And as always, if you like what you see here, if you like my take on movies, then hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit that bell. See you on the next time I'm release the next movie review. So guys, I will see you next time with my review, I promise, of The Wicker Man. So in the meantime, be well, be good to each other, and go watch a movie. Take care, guys.